Well, it's certainly a pleasure to be here tonight. Um, just the top, okay. Uh, he introduced us, I think, as marketing experts. I don't know that I'm a marketing expert. I tell you what I am, I'm an auctioneer. Um, I'm also a field representative for Farmers and Ranchers Livestock Commission Company at Salina, Kansas. I guess what, uh, when Kevin asked me to come in, I thought I would just kind of talk about some of the basics. Uh, a lot of this stuff is, is uh, you might think, is, is kind of elementary, or it could be, but I tell you what, it's easy, I think, as producers to overlook some of those things. And so several of my slides will say, you know, it's the little things in marketing that can make a big difference, and I, I truly believe that. So my background is in, uh, I run a commercial cow herd, a small commercial cow herd, but the bulk of um, uh, my experience within the livestock industry has been uh, backgrounding cattle. Uh, we have a backgrounding operation and used to finish cattle growing up. I worked at KLA for six years and really enjoyed my time there as a field rep. And so I got to know a lot of the seed stock producers and that's really how I got to meet Kevin. And then through aspirations of wanting to auctioneer, I got an opportunity to sell at farmers and ranchers and I've been there for three years now. And so I, I don't know that I'm an expert, but, but I do have some experience in uh, several different segments and so I'm just going to kind of share with you from my perspective. So maximize marketing your calf crop. <clears throat> your calf crop is either fed or bred. Sometimes I think that we forget that um, and, I, and I am not encouraging you to sell it farmers and ranchers are superior tonight, I'm encouraging you to think through how you market your cattle. I think a lot of you invest a lot of money into genetics and into management and sometimes the best uh, way to, to go forward and to really capitalize on that is to feed them. And I noticed that Derek Martin's back here today and he manages Kinsley Feed Yard and does a heck of a job and that's a great place to send cattle and I think that that is certainly a valuable option and something to consider. But whether you feed them or breed them, someone is going to do that and I think that's important going forward is that uh, maybe you're not the one to finish the cattle maybe you're not the one to breed them but someone will and so value is determined based on decisions you make prior to reaching the auction barn that's also something um, I want you to think about as we go through here today Marketing choices, so if you're not going to feed or breed them, you've got to determine a method of sale. And, and I put auction versus private treaty up there. Obviously, I'm a huge uh, advocate for the auction method. That's how I make a living. And I think there's several reasons why uh, up there, auction market is a secure way to transfer ownership and uh, risk of fraud. There is certainly uh, a, a lot of, uh, it, within any business, um, you're, you're dealing with your livelihood. I think it's important to use someone who's bonded than uh, can help uh, reduce a bunch of that risk. Also, competitive bidding. When you bring your cattle to the auction market, whether it's on video or uh, an auction market, you're going to have multiple buyers there bidding on your cattle. Uh, the livestock market does have the ability, of course, to sort your calf crop to gain the most value out of different weight classes. This is extremely important when we have 30 consigners or 50 consigners bring in cattle, we can maximize what those seven weight steers bring instead of have it range from 600 to 800 and selling a, a calf crop. Obviously, if you're a producer that has 500 or 600 cattle, it's a little different, but the average herd size, if it's 25 to 50 head, uh, those cattle can probably need to be sorted some to maximize some of that value. As I said earlier, it's the little things in marketing that can make a big difference. That's actually the title of the next uh, few slides here. And so I think it's extremely important that you choose a market that's reputable or an outfit that's reputable to work with. And so making sure that that manager is, uh, is honest and respectable, making sure that they have uh, facilities that they can accommodate you. I think that next one, communicating with buyers and sellers is critically important and, and really makes a big difference on the auction market you choose to send your cattle to. It's important that he communicates with you and that you communicate with him. Uh, information, which is gonna be on the next slide, is critical. Um, you've got to make sure that you're working with an auction market that works well with buyers, and there's several reasons uh, and, and ways to work with buyers as well as the sellers as well. Um, closest is not always best. So we have, a, oh, I had someone tell me here a while back, they bring their cattle to Salina and they drive by three barns to get there. So closest is not always best. Sometimes you can trip over a, 
a dime to try to save a nickel, if you will. Uh, it might cost a little more to truck them somewhere, um, but you need to go to that barn. That's the best fit for you and can really maximize your value. Also, communicating with that auction market to make sure and position your cattle to sell at the right time. Um, I know these are basic things, but I tell you what, I, I don't know how many people bring cattle in that are upset that their cattle sold at seven o'clock at night. Well, they brought them in at noon or one o'clock in the afternoon. So consequently, you all can't sell at two o'clock. And uh, that's uh, important. Presentation of your calf crop is critically important. Fat doesn't always sell. And so, uh, you know, I, I know that there's people that have a lot of genetics um, and have spent a lot of money on bulls. But I tell you what, if you want to feed them 40 pounds of corn silage a day and then bring them to the auction market and you're disappointed because they don't sell well, well, you've taken all the go out of those cattle. So you need to make sure that they are presented properly. The next one is critically important as well, and I think that's certainly advantage of selling your cattle on site versus on a video is really being able to control your fill or shrink, and part of that is delivery at the proper time. If you're selling calves right off the cow, you need to make sure that those cattle, I personally wouldn't want the cattle in there at four o'clock the day before, they're gonna shrink tremendously on you there. And uh, if you're selling cattle that have been backgrounded, delivering those cattle at a proper time to make sure that they have the proper fill or shrink. You can uh, gain or lose a tremendous amount of money on that is, uh, is my opinion there. Again, little things in marketing that can make a big difference. Info, info, info. So um, at Salina, with my experience, uh, we sell a, a lot of our cattle to the north. Um, a lot of our cattle go to farmer feeders in Nebraska and Iowa. And it is uh, amazing how much these buyers want to know as much information about your cattle as possible. So obviously the genetics and working with a reputable seed stock producer that can help you, uh, noting those sires used and even the cow herd bloodlines. And then there's a term in their genetic hedge. And so what that means is everything that you have spent on these cattle and having the predictability of these quality genetics allows buyers to spend more money because they know that they're worth more in the end. And so proving that through documentation to them is incredibly important. That, that's uh, hard to stress. Uh, vaccination protocol, weaned versus unweaned. Um, you know, I tell you, that's a, that is a uh, interesting one, weaned versus unweaned. Sometimes it seems like um, if the cattle are unweaned and they've had two rounds of shots, they might bring more. And, and that seems funny because um, a lot of times guys will bring weaned cattle in. If they're two weeks weaned or three weeks weaned, um, a lot of times they could bring less money because the guys that are buying them know that that's about when they're ready to break. Um, and so, uh, all, and then the other thing is if they're unweaned and they have two rounds of fall shots, uh, if you bring your calves to town, they've had that. Backgrounders know how to handle those cattle. They know how to handle a balling calf. And so I think it's just as important to have uh, the shots given. And whether you're going to wean them or, or uh, not wean them, I think um, that's a decision management-wise that needs to be made. And uh, if you're going to wean them, wean them for a long enough time that it does provide value. The use of a feeder profit calculator. So I put this in as, as an example. The International Genetic Solutions uh, has a feeder calf calculator. They've been working with several different uh, breed associations. There are several of these products out there now. This one doesn't cost anything to use, um, but basically, you know, you could work with uh, IGS or, or, or ask Kevin about it. There's probably a calculator out there that figures in a lot of these things for you, the genetics, the vaccination protocol, whether or not they're weaned, and then they put it in a simple form for these farmer feeders to look at and see this is why these cattle are worth more money. That makes sense to a lot of those feeders. So that's uh, one thing that we have started to use. Uh, the bullet down at the bottom. Feeders remember how your cattle perform when they bid on them next year. That's critically important. These guys are sharp that buy these cattle for a living. A lot of them have been doing it for 20 or 30 years. Uh, if they don't get along with those cattle and they're not profitable for them, they remember that next year. So. Once again, the little things in marketing that can make a big difference. Timing can be everything. 
Um, don't have your head in the sand or be afraid of change. It is easy in our day-to-day -day chores and uh, the things that we're doing at home to get wrapped up in the production of these these critters and and uh, and not be up and looking around to see what the board's doing um, and then to, to really be afraid of change. You know, we always sell cattle the second week in October because that's the way Dad did it. Um, maybe there's nothing wrong with that, but I do think that it is important to change. The volatility in this market today can make or break you. I mean, it can be a huge swing. When they can change the price of feeders, um, you know, three or four dollars in a day, uh, it really makes a huge difference on these trends. And they can change very, very quickly. So don't put your head in the sand. Be, be listening. Be aware of what the markets are doing. Special sales. So I think it's always important to kind of pay attention to uh, kind of making sure that you can put similar classes of cattle together. So if you're weaning your cattle for 45 or 50 days, put them in a wean back sale. Those guys are there to buy the, that quality. They're there to buy those cattle because of that. If, if you're selling replacement females, put them in a featured female sale. You always want to sell with the same type of cattle. If you don't have load lots, make sure that they can put them together. Those cattle need to leave in 52,000 pound packages or roughly that to maximize uh, the expense of hauling those cattle. Of course, always pay attention to seasonal highs and lows. You know, we've been selling a lot of uh, fall calves that have been weaned here the last several weeks. It's been a great time to sell them, and so you just need to be aware of those seasonalities. I know that some of this is basic, and maybe it's elementary to you, but I think it's always important to kind of remind you of some of those things. So Farmers and Ranchers, Livestock Commission Company, I did want to just hit on where I work and what we do. So Mike Samples is the manager there. He's been there for over 30 years. We're the largest uh, volume of cattle sold for, I don't know, the last 15 years roughly. Last year we sold 209,000 head. Our location is best. So we're centered at, uh, or we're positioned at I-70 and 135 Junction at Salina, Kansas. We're really a nice middle spot for dry areas or wet areas for cattle to move north or cattle to move south or east or west. And so that's certainly an advantage that we have. Some of the things that we do, we take cattle 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you want to send them, we'll take care of them and that's incredibly important. The FNR Livestock Resource is a new publication that we've done for a year. We're just coming up on our first year. It's a publication that uh, we started in order to communicate with our buyers and sellers and, and really to help them figure out how to make your cattle worth more and, and, and why they're worth more. So it's a way to communicate. I did bring, uh, I think I've got a slide on that I'll talk about next. The other thing, uh, we used and embraced technology. So we've got media displays, we have the opportunity if you have information to represent your cattle, we want to make sure that we get that in front of the buyers. So we've got those TV displays that we run ads on when we're not using them to, uh, to promote uh, either videos of cattle or uh, if, if it's the IGS report or if it's your sire information. We have those there to try to, to, to basically push as much info as we can to the buyers. We also uh, are the only barn in Kansas with uh, the tag reader for EIDs that we can run large sets of cattle through for that. Um, that hasn't been something that we've done here recently, but we are equipped to do so. We also have uh, several special sales throughout the year, whether it's calf, female, or seed stock sales. Uh, seems like we end up with uh, several dispersals right through our barn because we are central located and have a competent staff and experienced crew that are capable of uh, pulling those off. I talked a little bit about the FNR Livestock Resource. Uh, as it says there, um, we're coming up on the first year, but the focus is really on value-added cattle and production practices. I've got, I've got uh, the, the latest issue here with me for you. If you're not a recipient and you'd like to be, send us an email and we'd add you to the list. It doesn't cost anything, um, but basically um, circulation is a little over 10,000. Uh, we sold over 100 pages of advertising the first year. It is offered on our website uh, as well. Um, that's it. So that's where I get to sit on Mondays and Thursdays. Something I enjoy doing and, and take very seriously is helping guys market their calf crops and, and hopefully add as much value as possible. That's all I have to share uh, right now. I'm sure that um, hopefully it stimulated some thought process to ask some questions here. I know Josh is going to talk a little bit about what he does now. Thank you all for your time.